All right, welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green, bringing you brand new interviews right here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Well, today the boss is back, not Bruce Springsteen, and maybe not your boss, but definitely mine. You should be fortunate enough to have a, a boss as cool as the legendary Stephen Piercy. Uh, he's here today to talk about the brand new rat box set, The Atlantic Years. This is a long overdue item. Rat vinyl has been hard to find, getting more and more expensive. Now you can get it in a box set, CD or vinyl. Go to officialstephenpiercy.com or click on the link in the description. Does the box set mean we're closer to that uh, long awaited rat reunion? No, I don't know about that, but uh, we're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about the 80 Sunset Strip Experience Tour that Stephen is on currently. And we're going to find out if maybe uh, a final tour could be in the, the works. Is Stephen one of these people who's going to play for the next 100 years? I'm not sure. Also, we have to ask him about uh, some of his peers, some of the bands that he came up with. Motley Crue, what is going on with these guys? They seem to be uh, making quite a bit of uh, news. Anyway, we're going to talk about all those things with Stephen Piercy and more right after this. Just I feel like I was just on a plane with him yesterday. Here he is, the one and only Stephen Piercy. What is up, my fellow friend? How are you, Stephen? Good to see you. This time, okay. this time next week, you and I will be on the Monsters of Rock cruise. Yeah, the boat gig, I call it. <laughs> yeah, when this interview airs, we'll be we'll be uh, boarding. Yeah, which yeah we will. Light yeah. life jacket and all. <laughs> well, right. It's, it's good to have the life jacket for sure. So, Stephen, everyone's really excited about the box set that people can pre-order right now. This is really a cool collector's item. It's available June 9th. I think it's going to sell out in most places. Um, right now, uh, the minute they put out the pre-order, it was like insane and they were happy as happy immediately so it's all good and like and like you say it's a it is the first time there's been like the full catalog on vinyl of the best and the real rat years mm -hmm. absolutely and uh so when i heard about the box at the first thing i wondered was who was involved of the members of rat did you guys get together and pick the things that go in this yeah, we all got together in a room, beat each other's ass, brought the lawyers. Uh, no, actually, it, you know, I, I think it's kind of funny because it shows the egotism. <laughs> if you got to have a picture, I got to have my picture in there. So every the only reunion we're going to get is everybody who got together, giving them the photos, you know, and, and that's it. But, you know, it's from the personal archives. I gave them a ton. And everybody gave their two cents, and at least, hey, there was some cooperation there. You know. How do you find out these things are going to happen? It's an, is it a decision that Universal makes? How, how does this come about? No, this was, you know, in the works. And it's just, I don't even know if they knew Atlantic and uh, BMG, if in fact it was the 40th year anniversary of RAT. I mean, the only thing missing from there is the EP, and because 1983 to this year is 40 years, um, so next year. But 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 I'll get the EP out sometime this year. Everybody's been asking over and over. Well, soon enough, kids. <laughs> soon yeah, and, enough. And, and I'll have have you back later in the year, and we'll talk about the EP track by track and everything that people want to know about it as we get closer to the 40th anniversary of that release. But with yeah. this box set, so as far as I see, you're the only one who's really out promoting this thing. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I beat the dead horse for a few years, you know, and, and to each his own. I hope the guys are all copacetic as pigs and shit, you know, and doing what they do. Nothing. But, uh, you know, hopefully everybody's cool and, and it's there's no animosity. But, you know, I created this monster, so to speak, rat. And if I'm the last one standing... Uh, um, 
you know, letting people know how great the band was with all five of us. So be it. And that's where you got. You got me out there touring, supporting the record and a lot of other good things coming. Yeah. Let's take a look at it, Stephen. It's up here on the screen uh, right now. This is the vinyl edition box set. Tell me a little bit about what people are going to get in this. Well, it's actually very cool. Um, besides the photos, the poster, you get a pass, you get a pick, you get the original KLOS sticker, uh, rainbow sticker, you get, God, I don't know, laminate, uh, well, work at gigs, but you get <laughs> laminate and it's just chock full of goodies, you know? It's, it's, it's actually a very long time coming. That oh, lamb is not the only thing at Rat that won't work at gigs these days. Uh, but so you have the five records here. These are the essential records, uh, full-length records from Atlantic. And then there's the 45 of Nobody Rides for Free, which was a song that people really yes. enjoyed on the Point Break soundtrack. So you get that in here as well. Correct. And, yeah. and you know what? I got to tell you, there's a surprise coming after this. They decided, BMG Atlantic, that... It, it, it blows my mind. So, but if you have an opportunity to get this, grab it because you know it's uh, it's about as good as it's going to get for a box set on vinyl. Um, the other records to me don't count because Robin is you know Robin our King Crosby is not involved. So I think it's appropriate this box set. I really do. All that's missing, like I say, is the EP. But it, it's uh, in grand, you know. Going out, look at it. Yes, great box, yeah. great box set. It's a it's a great package, and it's an affordable price. I don't say that just uh, as a pitch to sell it, but it really is. Huh. If you were looking for a piece of 180 gram vinyl, you're going to spend 30 something dollars. If you wanted to find one of the originals, you're going to spend over 50 dollars. So to get all of these in a in a box set, and it's also available in CD for people who want that. Yeah, and stream, I'm sure, you know. Uh, when I do release the EP, it's going to be vinyl, and that's it. Uh, so yeah. be ready for that. But there, like I say, there's a surprise coming right after this from BMG Atlantic, and, you know, I won't say anything. And in the meantime, I'm still, Legacy is prepared to be uh, shipped off. We'll see that release sometime this year. But right now, it's 120, 50% uh my 1980s sunset strip experience tours this yeah. year and next year yeah which i i think is great and people are starting to enjoy it and um your solo band has never been busier this is the most that you've been on the last i've been with you the last two years we're out there working hard and the goal and what you would like is to do a ground tour we're doing a lot of fly shows and going with the country but you would like to hit as many cities and many markets as you possibly can yeah the same motto we had back in the day we go where most bands you know rat used to go to most places everybody feared to go and that's where i'm at i mean your hardcore audience could be in some of these you know smaller towns but i'm going to this year as you know we'll do sporadic this and that uh next year we're going to launch the real uh, Sunset Strip Experience Tour because it's a whole nother project that's going to end up inevitably a residence next year and uh, a show we have cooking up a concert series show at Vami, v -A -M -I -E -E com. So get that out of the way. Yeah, and we'll have links to all these things in the description. Um, you know, Stephen, you and I have talked about it. You're going to be celebrating a birthday this year. You'll be on stage for your birthday. Uh -oh. I am? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would know. We won't uh, say well, how old you are, but people can Google it. You are still standing. You're still rocking. You're <laughs> yes. still strong. But I, I, from our talks, I don't feel like you want to be on stage when you're past 70. I think you'd maybe like to leave the party while you still got it. Is that how you feel? <laughs> You know, I, yeah, that's a fact. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of groundwork and I've got great guys in the band. Unfortunately, you know, the guys in Rat find it really difficult just to be difficult. And so my solo band is about as good as it's going to get, kids. And if you want to see some shows, come on out because these might be... Uh, they're going to be fewer and fewer, and it's okay. 
you know, I'll, I'll still have projects going down and, and the label and all of this. I'm always going to release music, you know, uh, but I'm not going to announce the retirement yet. So, yeah. But uh, as you've said, um, if it's a smaller market, come out and see Stephen because he's not going to be able to hit every city. Sometimes we go to these places and there's a lot of people online for the meet and greet. And I think they realize it might be their only chance to meet you. Um, and I will say the meet and greet is a great part of the show. You know, Stephen, I, for years, you weren't necessarily the most accessible guy, should I say, or, or fan friendly. He yelled at me when I was in high school uh, outside of radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know what? It's, it's, well, you know, you get rid of a few things, take care of business. And, you know, me, I, I've been in, in, at this party for a long time and grew up with a lot of the bands, the Great Whites, the Dante Fox, the uh, Rocks Regime, uh, the Motley Cruz, the Wasp, uh, even, uh, you know, and I just, it, it just clicked, uh, you know, about a couple of years ago and having a talk with my business partner, Christy, uh, on some business stuff and we decided you know let's take this embrace it because our 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 mean greets are like a fucking party in themselves people go dressed up it's like going to an 80s gig and and we decided man let's embrace this because you know and thank god a lot of our peers you know from the 80s scene are getting out there number one the fact that the, they're getting played more than they did then uh number two it's wide open you know people want to hear this this music it's it was colorful it was dangerous it was exciting it was fun it was dress up and it was all these way cool fucking things so we're just taking it by the cojones here and we're running with it and and it needs to be embraced you know because it, it only happened once that 1980s you know and it wasn't all debauchery man it was about meeting people the party on the strip you know you go do these gigs in the middle of nowhere and there's thousands and thousands of people and uh so that's what it's going to be uh the sunset strip experience there's so much to do and you know i want to uh showcase these bands that are left and the guys that are left my peers it's not just about it's not just about me and rats place in history uh with the 1980s it has to do with everybody the big spectrum you know, uh, the eighties MTV, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you're on VH one with Prince, Michael Jackson, Priest, Scorpions, Van Halen, Rat, Motley, you name it. It was like a big, you know, melting pot. So we're going to bring that back. We're going to yeah, reel it in, you know, I think that's one of the great things. Two things that I noticed the most when you meet the people after the show. One, that you've touched a lot of people's lives. There's people, I see people cry very often. They never thought they would get the chance to meet you. A lot of people thank you for getting them through hard times. We see that often. People, whether it's talking about your own health battles, whether sure. it's talking about uh, um, times that the music was there for them. That's one. And the other one is the amount of younger people coming out, dressed yes. up in the 80s, and, and maybe their family got them into it. Uh, but they love it and they love to get to meet you. And it's fun to see that excitement 40 years later. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, they're bringing their kids and sometimes the kids are bringing their kids. It's like, mm. well, holy shit. You got to remember, this is 40 years later. You know, a lot's gone down. <laughs> you know, There's 20 year olds going to shows and, you know, it's like, wow. Well, and they know what they're singing. They know what they're saying and they want that vibe. I mean, the last gig we just did was was fucking out of control, you know, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, Stephen, let's talk about who's in the band, the solo band. Yeah. Well, we got uh, always Eric Farentino's who's developed into this insane presence uh uh scott coogan uh we have on drums um matt thorne ex mickey rat actually ex rat bass on bass yeah. um and that's brilliant i'm so glad he's he's kicking with us uh then we have johnny monaco who's i just saw this this cut of him on youtube and i went uh, last whipping going down here so that boy's got it and you know 
the rat bastards are, are out for blood, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's really a great lineup. Uh, Eric's been with the band for over 20 years. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and Scott Coogan has been in, in, in and out, but he's been there a while. Matt Thorne co-wrote back for more. He's been part yeah. of the Metal Massacre EP with the rat. So he's had Correct. such a history. Um, and then uh, Johnny Monaco, you mentioned as well, who obviously who's on this show, uh, playing and singing uh, backups and all those things. So it's really a great yeah. show. And you're playing the songs that people want to hear. Uh, have you ruled out playing a, a full album? Is there any chance you one day, maybe next year, you do Out of the Cellar? I think that's predictable. <laughs> I mean, we could throw that down in a second, so that'll probably happen. The funny thing is, we're putting something together right now for a show, as you know, at this at a smaller venue, uh, semi little residence thing, and it incorporates the video hits. Well, shit, unbeknownst to me, we've got sixteen videos out there. That's a set in itself. So, uh, as you're mentioning, you know, there's a lot of music to cover, and you know. I, there's certain songs I have to play or I'd get an ass kick, you know, um, but we throw in solo stuff. Uh, shit, if we have a long enough set, you know, I'll throw down a priest, a Zeppelin, uh, you know, whatever suits me, you know, arcade. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff, to, a lot of ground to still cover here, you know. You're, you're in a fortunate position to have a catalog. You could have a set list that's a greatest hit set every night. And yeah. uh, a lot of fans feel that way and know every song you play. It's, it's rare. And we go out on these bills with other bands and a lot of great bands, but sometimes you know one, two, three songs. With mm -hmm. Stephen Piercy, Rat, you pretty much know every song. Yeah, that's where I say it's funny. I might have to throw down the video set, you know, those 16 dudes. So that'll happen eventually. But yeah, you're right. You know, we have we had a lot of great songs. I got to tell you, once again, you know, with the new box set, I, I had hopes that I wasn't going to be the only one showing presence and 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 throwing up the, you know, hey, here's a box set. This is what it was really about. The real true rat. You know, I know Robin's dancing with the angels right now, and and so am I, and that's all that matters. You know, I'll, I'll take care of business. It's okay. I'll bring the rat and roll to you. That's the only way you're going to get it anyway. So, you know, let's get it on. Yeah, well, so the people, you know, they want to know about rat. <laughs> uh, I remember Ramones, and they all disliked each other at one point. They put out a box set, and they at least got back together to do uh, the one they call bear is making some noise in the background but yeah they, we have an intruder go ahead that's all right i'm sure he'll take care of it uh but the ramones got back together and they did this box set they didn't really like each other they didn't really speak but they signed this box set it sure would be nice if rat did that i don't see it happening now let's talk about your relationships with these guys Stephen. you do <laughs> occasionally talk to bobby blotzer yeah you know um he, it, it, it's so funny that, you know, people think that Bob was, you know, the problem child. Well, no, 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 no. But yeah, we speak occasionally and he is, he's excited about the box set. And, you know, uh, as far as anybody else, I do business with uh, one member, but there's really no business, unfortunately. And that business will be taken care of. But no, I mean, it's unfortunate because Warren Demartini, you know, uh, the guy's a fucking talented guitar player. And, you know, I know we, we actually were writing songs before, uh, you know, we kind of just dissipated. I mean, I uh, couldn't even tell you, you know, but if somebody doesn't want to work, then you're going to have a scuffle. But we were actually writing. And on Legacy, I'm going to put out a, uh, probably the last song Warren and I ever wrote and uh, a lot of other groovy stuff. But Warren, you know, God bless him. You know, he can kick back. You know, everybody can kick back. And that's pretty much it. Bob's semi-retired, you know. He uh, has come out and jammed with me. Um, but other than that, I've thrown the invitation out to Martini. So if anybody wants to know, where's Warren? I don't know. Fucking get a hold of him. Tell him to call me. Yeah, you know, I love the jam. The minute you put us in a room, we'll write the next way. Cool. You know what I mean? I feel like right now uh, you speak to Robin Crosby more than you speak to Warren Demartini. 
And, you know, that's a fact because I speak to Robin every day. And that's just the way it is. I write every day. And when I go in to write, I go in like, you know, I'm doing it like we used to do it. Uh, you know, hey, that's where it's at, you know. He's happy we have the box set, I can tell you. That is yeah. rat. That is rat, that box set. I will say we're talking about the songs. I'll tell people I get to tour with you and there's not a day that I don't ask you about one of my favorite songs and one of the deep cuts. The other day I'm walking around with uh, right between the eyes in my head uh, and I'm asking you about that one. And and so you're very open to giving the fans what they want as much as possible. Sure. Like you said, you can only fit so much in a set. And because Rat is most likely not going to get back together, you never say never, uh, but it doesn't seem like a great option. It's great that you play those songs. You are the voice of rap. Well, I'm not just the singer guy. I write. I wrote a lot of those songs, you know, uh, with one or two or a few. Um, but no, I'm very much a writer person. I don't know if many people know that or knew that. They thought I just yelled at you. But no, um, it is. I'm not telling you. Once again, you know, the box set is about as groovy as it can be. And, you know, it's, it's, it is, like I say, the real rat. Unfortunately, the band can't get behind it to take care of business, but that's okay. That's why I'm here and that's my job. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, right? Yes. Well, speaking of dirty jobs, I, I can't let you leave without asking about one of your peers, Motley Crue. It, uh, you know them better than anybody. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think a little bit about this situation that's going on right now with Mick Mars? Wow, Mick. Yeah, well, I was, you know, when I first got wind of that, like, I don't need the 10 fucking minutes to 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 respond to any of this. It just got picked up. But, you know, Carmine's a great friend of mine and uh, Carmine apiece. And when I saw that, I was just shocked that, you know, he was so close to those guys, too. Carmine was very close to everybody and closer with Mick Mars. So, you know, unbeknownst to me, too. I mean, look, I knew they did some of that tape stuff, you know, back a bit. But I didn't know it was so overblown, which is crazy. I just didn't like the disrespect. And you know what? I could give a shit, man. Nikki, you know, I do shows with Vince. Vince is my brother, man. We're Scully brothers, you know, from way back. They'll never change. You know, we hit the strip together. We were the gladiators together. Robin lived with, you know, Nikki, uh, you know, but so here and there, if we're talking about the commotion, yeah, I thought it was disrespect to brother Mick, I, you know, as a gladiator brother and, and just, you know, to Carmine, I mean, holy shit, that kind of bummed me out. So I stepped in and said I had to that. It wasn't cool. I don't be thinking of a shit anyway, but you know, Hey, you know what? Life's short, man. And, and, you know, a lot of us are dropping like flies and you got to remember this is 40 years later, the ones that are still standing, you know, should give respect to one another. And that's what, what I'm saying about our building with the sunset strip experience. It, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, we could be doing some shows and it'll be the last time you'll see maybe one of our peers. And that's really a drag, but that's life. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, so I was a little dismayed, you know, at the comment and, and look, and then Mick finds out some other shit. Like, you know, hey, look, yeah. you know, shit, it's still business, you know, and that's where, you know, I'm having difficulties with, uh, you know, in the rat camp, you know, I mean, shit house mouse, you know, this stuff never uh, uh, ceases, but, you know, that's my end of the, the, the Motley Mick. Uh, well, well, Stephen, on the comment that he made about Carmine, it's very obvious that Tommy Lee was uh, influenced by Carmine, as were most drummers. So to call him washed up or to insult him it seemed like a, a, a really silly move. He was spinning drumsticks on the Ed Sullivan show. You know, nobody. Yeah. Knew. Like I say, that's where I saw the disrespect. And you know what? If it would have been somebody else, I would have said something too. You know, it just happened to be our brothers. You know, I still think we're somewhat of friends, I hope. You know, I know Vinny and I, every time we see each other, it's way cool. We have nothing to discuss, but not even music. It's like, hey, you know, uh, but that's their trip. 
It's not mine. I could give a shit. Don't need the 10 minutes. Don't need the 15 minutes. You know, I got my own shit to deal with. So yeah, I'm gonna ask, I, can, I understand what Mick's going through. Yeah. I'm going to ask you two more, you two know. more minutes then instead of 10 minutes. But you yeah. made an interesting point that if it wasn't for Mick Mars, the band might have been called Christmas. And the band might have been, who knows, Robin... Tommy, myself, and Nikki, we rehearsed for a couple days. So, I mean, I mean, look, Nick, back in the day, there was so much shit going on. And they tried to get Jakey from my band, you know, from, from Rat, Mickey Rat, when Jakey was in the band. It was like, are you never satisfied? You got Mick right here. You guys are already too fast for love. You are, you're already doing your first record. You know what I mean? Uh, when they released that first uh, uh, record, Too Fast for Love, if I'm correct. We were still hanging, and they were trying to swipe Jakey, you know. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it, it's it's very interesting to think about it, actually. Even they wanted you and Robin at one point. Was that before Vince? You know, I don't know. It's like he was never really happy with him either. Hence, John Karabi. Hence, I don't know. You know what? It's a shame because you know right now that you should be we should all be embracing this this 80s scene i mean look at they're they are out doing the stadium thing for the second time except there's a little fart in the road uh but it, it tells you how how much people are still you know grooving on the 80s and and miss it and want it and they really don't give a shit how they get it sometimes you know yeah absolutely uh, you you know you mentioned if the band could have been called Christmas without Mick Mars, Mick Mars also put up some money in the beginning when those guys didn't have oh, it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was also, there. I was there. Yeah, dude. no, you yeah. lived it. And Nikki Six, if he would have had his way, maybe their logo instead of a pentagram would have been a swastika, another one of his genius ideas. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It, 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 it is what it is. Now, you know, their audience can make assessments and, and, and trip. It's just a drag that it had to go there, you know, and then it snowballed into something even bigger. And, and you know what? Hey, if you're getting screwed by one of your guys and, and you take care of business, just like, you know, it's inevitable with me. I mean, look, I mean, we're finally out of the mess. You know, we're not. <laughs> There's not the sue me, sue you going on. And that's a big step for uh, my guys. But, you know, I did for the last time put the word out. Yeah, you know, let's try to do something. And this is even more of a reason to try to do something. Is it going to happen? Probably fucking not. So I really don't care. And if anybody knew me or knows me, I go, I, I keep moving and I don't lose focus. And right now, I'll represent the band that I created and, you know, with Robin's blessing, uh, we'll take care of business, you know, because it's not going to last forever kids. The next thing you're going to see are all these tribute bands and these cover bands headlining these places. Cause we're not going to be around and those are going to be our representatives. So let's take care of business. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You're keeping the brand uh, alive and, and one way or another, the rap music, um, continues a lot of great shows this year. I want to make sure everyone goes to official Stephen Piercy. Yes, and, and yes, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of great shows, and and we can't hit all of like you say we can't hit all these places. But next year will be the formal uh, Sunset Strip experience, and it might be the last you know one for me, um, but not for any reason. But I got other things to do, and uh, like. Uh, a lot of good business, but, but, you know, I'm out there Those dates are posted and our meet and greets are like a fucking party in themselves. And we love it. We love it. Dress up, have a good time. Say hello. I'll sign anything, you know, for you. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. I, I see that you are enjoying hearing them and you've also kept it incredibly affordable. It's not a cash grab. We could charge a lot of no. money and then, it's been really about meeting as many people and, and families because they do come sure. as families uh, at, at, a, at a time. Uh, there's a lot of your peers are on these shows. It's amazing how many people yeah. we run into who have toured uh, in support of Rat. You know, uh, we, we went sure. to shows with Kicks, Brian Forsythe, telling oh, us yeah. about opening for Rat. We, uh, we did shows with Doro Pesh. Her drummer, Johnny D, was in the band Brittany Fox. Right. At the break, supporting for Rat. A lot of bands. 
a band called well, Bon Jovi, a band called Poison. Yeah, well, you got Poison too. And by the way, you guys in Poison, you owe me a fucking gold record. It's like what, forty-five years now? Jesus Christ! I let you open up a show, and this is what I get. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, we. We, we did talk about that. You we were saying that a lot of these guys uh, made a little promise if they made it, yeah. they'll at least that. Um, they, bon they can't seem to keep it. And, and <laughs> it's not a difficult thing. I have a videotape on the, uh, a side note of a uh, uh, party in a uh, real early morning with a couple of the guys in Poison, Brett, Ricky, uh, Phil Schwartz, my security guy, back in like 80 five or something just begging me to get on the road and and uh, this video i've got to, i'm gonna find it and i'm gonna give it to you because i asked them if they wanted it and they said no i don't know it's the fact that they were doing blow getting fucked up or or begging to go on the road with rat but you know i kept my promise and uh let them do some shows and uh god bless you know that's the way it is yeah uh the other thing i'll say steven you know um you leave it all on that stage uh, you've ha you've had your knees replaced. You've had every surgery. You've fought cancer. Whatever it, you've beat uh, uh, substance, uh, and yet you're on that stage over an hour every night. And uh, and and listen, I'm on the same planes with you. And I get off the yeah. plane and I feel like I'm going to die every time. And then I think to myself, I can't complain. <laughs> Stephen's out there doing it too. Yeah, you know, I. I, I I just do what I got to do. It's 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 crazy. I'm blessed. Uh, you know, we, we love going out there. We love meeting the fans more than ever. I mean, it, it's like, man, you know, if my guys don't hit the ground, kissing the ground, that they had those fans back then. Because I, I see uh, being out on the road, I see how appreciative they were to the music. And it's the least you can do is like, Fuck, hang out, play a show, do something, get online. Thank you very much, you know, for, uh, you know, making it happen. But, hey, look, I'll carry the flag, and and, and that's that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, absolutely. So let's remind everybody, uh, go to officialstevenpiercy.com, tour dates, merchandise, news, all the things that are going on. That's one. Uh, yeah. And then also the, the box set, the Atlantic Years, the five it's core albums. Yeah. Five albums. It's it's a great record, man. And we got the the poster and the Nobody Rides Free Forty Five. There's a, a vintage uh, laminate replica, the KLOS sticker. There's a guitar pick, uh, replica tour book. Uh, so anyway, all these things you can get in the description as well, or go to official As yes. I said, we're getting ready a couple of days away from the Monsters of Rock cruise, and it doesn't stop there because the rest of this year and a lot of Stevens peers will be seeing. We'll be seeing guys that started before, guys that started after, Vince Neil, Tom Kiefer, everyone that people really enjoy. You get to see them. Those packages are what makes it so great to see everybody it together. Does. It really does. I mean, it's always fucking cool hanging out with Vince, you know, and Tom, whatever. <laughs> hey, look, man, it, it's it's. I can't say it enough that it was such a great period, and everybody should. You know, get into that. You know, if you want to see some good shows, the '80s uh, Sunset Strip experience. It, it's it's cool event. It's cool event. Yeah, and again, later this year, Stephen will come back, and we're going to talk about the EP. We're going to go track by track about how it was recorded. It's there's not as much known about that uh, because it was yeah. before the. It was the very beginning. So we'll do that, Stephen. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to your life and packing because that seems to be what we do the most. Yeah, right. And everybody out there, thank you so much. Love you guys. Got a lot of shows and let's rat and roll. See you out there. Thank you for watching.